So welcome back to Stu Structures. We are here to start building a water tower for my steam locomotives in Billington, West Virginia. So stay tuned. So welcome back to Stu Structures. I am Mark Stewart. Uh, you know, we're starting to build some of the buildings and things for the Beelington end of what my model railroad will eventually be. And, uh, you know, I had a wooden water tower and I'm going to go by standard plans. Uh, I don't have good pictures of the one that was in Beelington, but I did find some others, uh, you know, photographs from the Beano Historical Society in my collection of other water tanks that were really similar to this one. And, you know, they may have been exactly like this one, I'm not sure. But I have a lot of, of uh, picture sources to go by and there's four pages out of the standard plan books to build this. So, you know, I'm just going to jump into this and uh, see if I can figure this out as I go and fly by the seat of my pants like I always do. And uh, we're going to build a water tank. Let's jump into this. Pictures on the, the water tank. I only have a couple that are actually from the Grafton, West Virginia area. And this is one of them. And, you know, it's blocked by cars. And, uh, you know, I, I played around with it a little bit and can kind of get some detail. And I can tell that it's built by standard plans. So with my standard plan book, I do have some drawings to work from. I did find several others throughout the B&O area which are you know, similar if not exactly the same type. So I came up with some of these other pictures which give me good pictures of detail and stuff uh, to build mine from. And uh, you know these are just a blessing out there. Uh, you know, most of these, this one right here, this is almost exactly the way the one in Billington was, even though it's not in Billington. And it has a separate water column across the two tracks, the way the one in Billington did. So it's a really good reference. And uh, you know, all the plumbing and everything, there, there's good pictures of that I can go by, even though they're not the ones in Billington. Plus, you know, the added benefit of having the standard plans uh, to go from as well just you know make this uh, at least a lot of good information to start from now the standard plans there's actually four pages of plans on this we have this one which shows all the detail and the sizes and everything of the water tank itself uh, you know then we have this one which shows almost all the support system and the steel underneath that supports the tank and all the weight of all that water because there's a lot of water in that tank and it's, it's really heavy uh, so it took a lot of support system in the center underneath you see this wooden structure which you know, has all the plumbing inside of it uh, I'm sure this was to help insulate it during the winter and protect it as well but you know, and then there's this drawing that just you know shows the ladder and its support system as well on there. So we have a lot of information to start from in uh, building this water tank. So to begin with, I'm just going to start with the tank. So I found this sheet of balsa wood here, and I measured the height of all the wood that will go around the sides of the tank. And I cut out the panels and I come back and scribe boards in them. And I just went ahead while they're flat and drew all the lines where the tank uh, you know, supports will go around the outside of the tank. Now for the top and bottom, I'm just using balsa wood. And I have these pieces here that are left over from sheets. So I'm kind of just taping them together and I come back and, and just draw my circles. Now the top circle is just you know about a foot uh, smaller than the top circle. And I guess this is to distribute the weight better in the tank. Um, then I come back and cut out those circles and just do some uh, bracing inside of them. And that'll be inside the tank, so now this will show. So it didn't matter. I just used scraps. On the bottom side of the tank, the wood is exposed. So I went, I came back here and with my upside down knife, went ahead and scribed the boards that made up the bottom floor. And then I just start gluing my sides to the tank. I, uh, you know, just glue the bottom edge to begin with and get my panels in place. And then I have to come back and slightly uh, cut each panel because they are angled to a slightly smaller top than the side. So they're not perfectly square panels. 
and to get all those in place and you know the the wood piece that I had cut for the top just didn't really quite work out right so I came back and just cut a really heavy cardboard or uh, you know press board for this now underneath of that that wooden enclosure that encloses all the pipe you know I, I just came back and found more thin balsa wood to play with and these are just pieces off the ends of sheets and I knew the height from that drawing so I cut all four panels and these had horizontal boards in them so I went ahead and scribed with my upside down knife the, the boards in those as well I cut four corner posts to give me some bracing in the corners and just start gluing them together gluing the two panels uh, together for each side and then gluing all those together to form the uh, the, the pipe uh, structure in the middle of the tank and now that's you know just about done too and we have an assembly there for that so then I come back and horizontal with the boards underneath that floor I just go ahead and glue this down to the very center of the tank in line with those horizontal lines on the floor of the tank now to make up all those little uh, rings that go around the tank I just chose this real small styrene uh, there's debate on this whether it was round or flat but I'm just gonna make them flat so I just took a bunch of these out I knew how many rungs I needed up the tank so I just painted that many of these and uh, come back and just glued those in place and I just glue it around and when it comes to the end I just put overlap the pieces and cut it that way that way I have an exact end meeting exact end now these had turnbuckles which kept them tight on the tank and this is a drawing of uh, what that turnbuckle would have looked like. Now I'm not going to go into all the detail of each turnbuckle. I tried to buy some and, and I just couldn't find anything, anything like this so I'm going to make these. And I start out with this styrene here and I come back and cut squares. Uh, to cut those little triangle pieces that make up either side of where that round all thread goes through and I find a piece of uh, styrene dowel which is the smallest that I have and I cut those into one foot lengths which was the length on that drawing of what these were and I just come back and start gluing those triangles two to each side on each end of that wooden dowel and leave the dowel just stick out just a hair on either end which you know kind of looks like the nut that stack stuck out and then you know I have all these to to use uh, you know on the on the, each of those rungs and there was two sets of these you know so there's 26 in all of these and after I go ahead and paint them black then I come back and just glue those to where uh, the rungs are now I have some trim board to do on some of this. I just went ahead and painted several pieces of this one by six to uh, use for trim boards. And uh, you know, to begin with, it's just it, it wraps the corners of that pipe enclosure down underneath. So I went ahead and did the trim on that piece underneath, and that was one more thing out of the way. Now the top, the top overhangs the top of the tank itself by one foot at its narrowest places. So I came back and just used the tank on a piece of styrene and drew the circle and then measured this out from there. And in the center of that, I know there's a, 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 a rafter system that goes up to a peak and there's this uh, pole in the middle of it which has a pointed top. So I measured it for length and went ahead and uh, just you know, filed down this top on it to give me a pointed top and then cut it to length and uh, you know then I had my center post. I went ahead and cut a bunch of rafters for in there and uh, also a bunch of extras because this lower edge of the uh, styrene itself is about a foot thick where the roof comes down to so I went ahead and gave some extra support out there on the edge just by wrapping these styrene pieces on there as well and glued that center pin into the roof and then I come back at all those corners and run my rafters from there up to the you know one foot down from the point of that top and that gives me my basic angles and since I'm using that real thin styrene, I go ahead and add some extra bracing in there just to keep the styrene from sagging or moving around on the roof once I glue it on. Then from that, you know, I, I measure my panels and go ahead and cut all my styrene panels out of that real thin for sale sign like I use for most everything. And I have panels. 
And uh, before I glue those on, I go ahead and glue this uh, roof structure to the top of the tank itself. And that gives it some stability for uh, being able to come back and glue all these panels in place. Yeah, and then they're not perfect. I had come back and trim the bottom corners to match and, and just play with them a little bit. But, you know, they worked out. And then I come back and with that same that trim that I use underneath that pipe structure, I go ahead and trim the uh, outer fascia board around the top of the tank. Now for uh, roofing, I'm just using this uh, real thin tissue paper like I use for all of my paper type roofs. Uh, you know, it's a little rougher of a texture once you get it on glued here, but I just glue the pieces up the panels and then glue strips down where all the panels meet to cover the, you know, the angles there and uh, put some black paint on it and that's my roofing paper on the roof. So that's the basis of the whole tank, uh, you know, done. And uh, we've got steel work to do, plumbing work to do, but uh, here's just a, you know, a view of it at this point. And, you know, it's, it's turning out rather well. I'm pleased with the way it's coming together. Uh, there's still a lot of detail and stuff to do, but uh, at this point, it, you know, it's, it's a nice looking tank assembly. So there you have the beginning of the water tower. The basic structure is finished. This had a whole lot of steel and supports underneath of it, a little bit of plumbing work to do. Uh, so we've got a good bit to do on this, but it's well underway. The uh, main body of this whole thing turned out nice. I like it. Uh, I think it is a good representation of what the actual one looked like. Uh, not having good pictures and stuff to work from for the original. I, you know, I'm just going by the standard plans and those other pictures kind of guessing at this. But anyway, in the next video, we'll continue on and get this finished. And, uh, you know, this is a, a, a very nice water tower. A lot of railroads use these. So, you know, if you've got one coming up that you need to build, take a look at this. In the next video, we'll finish it up with all the iron work and you'll be able to build your own water tower from this. So uh, like and share my videos. Some of this information, a lot of people would like to know how to do, and there's not a lot of information out there. There are some people that scratch build things, but you know, this water tower, it's, it's a very unique piece that a lot of railroads used. So share this with other people out there in the hobby that may need the information. And uh, you know, in the next video, like I said, we'll finish up the steel work and stuff and be done with an, one more structure for the model layout. Um, yeah, and the whole point of all this is just to jump out there and scratch build something. And uh, you know, subscribe to my channel and the more you watch, hopefully, the more you'll learn and be able to do some of that for your model railroad. So drag out your trains and play and happy model railroading.